Okay, so now in this uh, tutorial, we're going to find the volume obtained by rotation. So there are three methods to do this. There's a disc, there's washer, and there's shell. And in this tutorial, I'm going to explain to you the difference between all three of them and when to decipher or when to decide when to use each. So I kind of did this flow chart to kind of help people decide. So this is how you determine which method to use for volume. You ask yourself, is the strip parallel? I mean, is the strip perpendicular or is it parallel? If it's parallel, just use a shell method. But if it's perpendicular, ask yourself one more question. Does the strip sit on the rotating axis? If yes, use disc. If no, use washer. These are the different characteristics each, um, each method has. Um, I put the method here, the equation you use for it, and when to use it. So for disc, like I said, you use it when the strip sits on the rotating axis and when the strip is perpendicular to the rotating axis. For washer, you use it when the strip does not sit on the rotating axis and when the strip is perpendicular to the rotating axis. And shell, you use when the strip is parallel to the rotating axis. Here are the equations for each method. Um, I'm pretty sure we already got this in class, but if you need it again, it's all here. The volume for disk is the integral of pi r disk squared dx or dy. The equation for washer, the volume of washer is pi r big disk squared minus pi r small disk squared dx or dy. And the equation for the volume of shell is the integral of 2 pi r shell h shell dx or dy. And I'll explain what all of this means when we go through some examples, but I'm just showing you the equations right now. Alright, so I'm just going to do a little, like, test to try and quiz you guys on which uh, method to use. I'm just going to go through some examples to show you guys which method to use. So, for example, um, we'll use this question first. The question says, find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region under the graph y equals negative x squared plus 4x about the x-axis over the interval 0 to 3. So, um, first things first, I'm guessing you guys already know how to draw a strip because of the first tutorial I did. If you guys remember this piece of paper, um, we can apply it to the same thing to figure out which, which strip to um, draw here. So here it says the equation is y equals negative x squared plus 4x. y equals something about x. So that's in this column, y equals something about x. So let's use a vertical strip. So our strip is vertical. Let me write that. Let me draw the strip. I'll just color it in. That's our strip right there. There it is. Uh, yeah, that's our strip. Uh, I'll just put xi here. It's good to put it there. And then dx. Alright, so when we asked ourselves what strip, um, we're using the vertical strip. And so, let me bring back my flow chart. Oh, but before I do that, um, let's identify the rotating axis. The rotating axis is, they said in the equation that it's being rotated about the x-axis. So I put this little like swirly thing to show that it's being rotated about the x-axis. So this is the strip and this is the x-axis. Since this is the strip is this way and the rotating axis is this way, is the strip parallel or is it perpendicular? Well, it is perpendicular because the strip is like this and the rotating axis is like this. Do you guys see that the strip the strip is this way? The rotating axis is this way. The rotating axis is the x-axis. So is the strip parallel or is it perpendicular? It's perpendicular. So does the strip quote sit unquote on the rotating axis? So this is really important to know. The strip right here, it does. It sits on it. It sits right there. This strip touches the rotating axis and it sits on it. See how the strip, the bottom of the strip, it literally just touches the rotating axis. The rotating axis here is the x-axis. 
that's the rotating axis and the strip sits on it so the strip sits on the rotating axis so it says does the strip sit on the rotating axis yes it does so let's go back to our flow chart um let's go back to our flow chart is the strip perpendicular or is it parallel it's perpendicular so let's go here does the strip sit on the rotating axis we said yes because the strip literally just sits there on the rotating axis so yes so that means we will be using the disk method method to use disk method alrighty here's another example uh, here's another question find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region enclosed by the graphs y equals 2 times the square root of x and y equals the square root of x about the line y equals 4 so y equals 4 is our rotating axis that is nothing that that's not an equation y equals 4 is just a rotating axis because it said about the line y equals 4 so this is our rotating axis that's why I put the swirly thing to show that it's the rotating axis um, the equations are y equals 2 square root of x and then y equals x this right here is y equals 2 square root of x in the blue this is y equals x in the red so if we go back to this original paper as you can see the equations are y equals um, something about x y equals something about x it's y equals something so y equals something about x that means we use a vertical strip let me draw the vertical strip the strip's kind of small, sorry about that, but I should have drawn it bigger, but it is vertical. This is the vertical strip. So, now let's start figuring it out. So when we asked ourselves what strip, the strip is vertical. The strip is vertical. Now, is the strip perpendicular or parallel to the rotating axis? So this is the strip, we said it was vertical. The strip is is going like this and then this is the rotating axis y equals 4 so the y equals 4 is like this the strip is vertical it's like this so this is the rotating axis it's like this this is the vertical strip is like this so is the strip per perpendicular or parallel to the rotating axis it is perpendicular because this strip is perpendicular to this to the rotating axis does the strip sit on the rotating axis yes or no in this scenario no it does not because the strip is all the way down here the strip does not touch the rotating axis the strip does not sit on the rotating axis it doesn't sit on it so to answer this question does the strip sit on the rotating axis absolutely not no it doesn't so let's go back to our flow chart so back to the flow chart for this one so, is the strip perpendicular or is it parallel? We said it was perpendicular because the strip is like this and then the rotating axis is like this. So the strip is perpendicular to the rotating axis. Is it perpendicular or parallel to the rotating axis? It is perpendicular. So, does the strip sit on the rotating axis? No, it doesn't. We said that it doesn't. So, we said no. So that means we're going to use the washer method. The method that we use is washer. All right, here's the third and final example. Find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region y equals 3x plus 10 and y equals 6 minus x when rotated about the axis x equals 0. x equals 0 is here, so I just put, by the way, x equals 0 is the y-axis. Because, you know, x equals 0 is the y-axis, y equals 0 is the x-axis, so on and so forth. x equals 0 is the y-axis. So, this is the region. And then, so the equations are y equals 3x minus 10, y equals 6 minus x. So it's y equals something about x, and y equals something about x. y equals something. And here it's y equals something. So since it's y equals something about x, let's use another vertical strip. Let me draw that vertical strip. This is the vertical strip. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, that's the vertical strip. 
Um, the x coordinate for this strip is x i, and then this would be like d x here. But the x coordinate for this strip is x i. But anyway, um, anyway, here's the rotating axis. the The rotated axis is x equals zero, which is really the y axis. So this is the rotating axis right here, and then this is the strip. So what strip? We already said the strip was vertical. Uh, is the strip perpendicular or is it parallel? Let's find out. So this is the rotating axis. This is the strip. The strip is like this. The rotating axis is like this. Therefore, the strip is parallel to the rotating axis. It's parallel. So let's go back to our flow chart. Is the strip perpendicular or parallel to the rotating axis? The strip is parallel to the rotating axis. It's parallel. So we use the shell method. So like we said, which method should we use? The shell method because the strip is parallel to the rotating axis. So basically um, that's how you determine or decipher which when to use which um, which method, whether it be disk washer or shell, you basically use this flow chart. Is the strip per excuse me? Is the strip perpendicular or parallel? I'll put to the rotating axis in red. To the rotating axis. So, is your strip perpendicular or parallel to the rotating axis? If it's parallel. Use shell method off the bat, just use shell method. If it's perpendicular, you have to ask yourself one more question. Does the strip sit on the rotating axis? Like, is it? does the strip touch it, the rotating axis? Does it sit on it? Does it touch it? If yes, use disk method. If no, use washer method. And then this is very important. This is just shows the characteristics of each um, method, and then in between them is the equation. If you didn't get this from class, you can... Uh, uh, note it here and you can like copy it from here too. So yeah, this is how you determine the difference between disc, washer, and shell. Here are the, here's the flow chart and then those are the method, the equations, and when to use it.